Jason. Hi, Jim. Say how you're in Bali, finally. Thank you, man. Good to see you here. Like 10 years in Asia together? Yeah, at least. <laughs> For our audience, the ones that know you and the ones who don't know you. I yeah. think there's a lot of people who always ask me or, or ask you uh, when they first meet you, like how you became, how you got into music a bad curation from the experience of, of, of or the collectiveness of, of human experiences. I, th I think we all learn off, we're all influenced by everyone by each other right i mean everything is everything it, 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 we are we're all one and we are, we we're all influenced by others so so for me it, i i i was i felt like I, I was just a big uh sponge that was just absorbing things uh, as a child all the time and and uh and and i just wanted to soak up anything like that that and i was curious anything that I was interested in and, and music was one thing that 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 particularly stuck out um I, my, I think my parents took me my first concert was Whitney Houston, uh, and that was my first live musical experience. But you know, my my mom bought me a guitar when I was uh, thirteen. Um, but it was really when I saw Sasha, uh, DJ Sasha play, uh, that changed my life. I saw that, and that was like, wow, that's that's the what he was doing behind the turntables. There was something transcendent there. And I thought that there was, I wanted to be on that path. And uh, yeah, that, that was how, how, how it got started, yeah. I'm also a big fan of Sasha. So yeah. I, I immediately became so influenced by his music in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Global, Underground. Global Underground series. I, I, I lived in Twilo, basically, in, in New York. Uh, I mean, uh, the monthly residency was uh, legendary. I mean, I think it's etched in my memory forever. And I think uh, in club history, uh, them flying in Concords from from London to uh, New York uh, and that, the massive line waiting in back in the days when people were playing vinyl and, and the DJ booth was on the side and you didn't even see, you couldn't even see, you, you weren't looking, no one was looking at the DJ, they were just dancing and it was a black box with an amazing sound system and uh, yeah. I, I, I have been there for the baddies too, but yeah, that was a good time. Um, you know, we're in a post-pandemic world now, right? We went through a couple of years, no, one's, no one knew it was going to happen. Yeah. It was a lot of virtual reality talk or augmented reality talk. Now that we're past that, do you feel like there's been a change in people and what they're seeking for experiences in at festivals or at concerts? Where do you see that possibly going? Well, I think uh, the proof is in the pudding. We're, we're, we're seeing sellout shows everywhere, right? I mean, we're, we're humans. Humans want connection. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, that, 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 that's the bottom line. Uh, we we want to connect. We want things in real life. AI is great and all, and it can augment what we're doing. But but that nothing beats in real life, and that feeling, that touch, the sense that the 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 the, the tactile feeling. Um, you know, I think we're all done with Zoom burnout, right? So when you look at um, uh, I I think where we're going with 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 live events uh, is that they we're going to get more into niche niche of niche right right so you have fest, you, you, there's a lot of festivals now right and people are going to start finding more specific festivals festivals of specific types and geographic regions uh with specific taste types whether it be music genre multi-genre music genres or wellness genres uh things like that um it depends um yeah, I think that that I think uh, we're in the we're in the age of a creator's economy, right? Uh, where everyone wants to contribute and everyone has something to offer, and um, you know the world is your oyster. So, so you know there's a, there's a lot of opportunity out there to create amazing uh, events, and uh, and 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 people want to people want to spend time. Uh, Connecting with each other, that's where magic really happens. Yeah, agreed. You know, just booking a hotel or a flight these days is like really almost next to impossible. Yeah. You know, just, just everything seems sold out. Uh, can you walk us through on your, your creative process on how when you create for that on the music side of it or on the experience side, 
from from the start to perhaps the end even you can't uh it's how how do you how do you keep it fresh every time you create something you, and how do you keep it relevant every time you create a new experience because i feel like from since i've known you you've always managed to do that you've always managed to fresh which is a, a genius factor and not many like, people can actually do that for every experience they do so i i thought Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate that. I, I pride myself on that. Uh, otherwise, I get hurt. But but I know in all seriousness, um, I think uh, I like to be comfortable at being uncomfortable. I like the I like the unknown, and I think uh, you know we, we we need to challenge ourselves, and we we owe it to ourselves and to others, and if we have the resources, to to enculturate to uh, offer uh, our resources and knowledge and, and curation and, and, uh, and uh, production to, to uh, provide an amazing experience. I mean, uh, it gives me tremendous grati uh, gratification uh, to, to do this, these sort of things. Um, do, you do, do, you, do you like always listen to music? Are you always watching old, like old films or old films? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an information uh, junkie. I consume everything. Okay. So I mean, on every device, on everything. I'm, of course, try, there's no, no better uh, education than travel, and and people. I meet, I, I meet lots of people, and they teach me a lot, and just I'm, I'm very observant. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm constantly keeping my eyes open, looking at. At things and reading everything I can get my hands on, and uh, and and I try to be as empathetic and mindful as possible to understand what what people are want and what well, well, yeah, I think what what, what people are feeling, what people want, and and um, yeah, what makes a good experience, uh, and how how can you elevate the experience? I mean, you created what hundreds of play, hundreds of things, uh, but of, of the hundreds of things that you created. What is probably the number one curation that you feel you put on that people were like, "Wow, this is an incredible feat." Uh, I, I I can't tell you what um, you know. A lot of them has been a yeah, collaborative process about, about collaborative um, experiences, and each and every one of them is special. But um, but if I had to pick one, I mean, I think the the the, the further future. Uh, one and two, uh, those are where I had complete freedom and I was kind of left to my own devices and had support of, uh, of, uh, of our team to, to come up with a lineup that was uh, unhindered by commercial terms, unhindered by, by uh, norms or anything. It was just, hey, what, what is great music? What would people like? What should people hear? Uh, and what should people hear? What time of day? Uh, and what context? And then, and, and who deserves the opportunity? Who deserves to shine that hasn't been heard? Whose voice should be heard? Uh, which I love to do most, uh, as you know. Um, yeah. So that's that's yeah. Let's talk a little bit about about for the future because I know since uh, well it hasn't been running for some past well, I think number of years now. But I did go to the, the second one. Yeah, I didn't go to the first one. I had meetings. I had a job to do or something. Yeah. But uh, the second one was was um, was very interesting, to say the least. Right? It was mm -hmm. it was well curated, but I do remember it rained for like two or three days or something like that. But that one day when there was pure sun, it was just pure. It was magic. Like it was a it was a beautiful day. Everyone was having an amazing time. I did feel like it was the, the freest curation. Pod Earth that day, right? With, without strict restrictions. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think the further future was a, was an experiment uh, that was ahead of its time, and um, it's still. I mean, if you look at the lineup today, it still stand, stands uh, uh, a test of time. I st if you look at that lineup, it's, if you put that lineup of today, it would still sell. I think it would sell out immediately. I mean, you're looking at Caribou Fortet, Nicholas Jar, um, you know, uh, on a Chicks Point, Never Andy Stott. Um, uh, things of that nature, farm fields. Um, you know, I'm very proud of that lineup. It's quite eclectic too. We threw a little far side here and there. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Mark Hyman and 
And I think it laid the roadmap for a lot of other festivals to follow after and other kinds of conferences that could see what an event or festival could be uh, because a lot of things were quite siloed. Um, yeah, I mean, everything, every, every, every event is a learning experience and we learn off it and we grow from it and we evolve. And, and while further future lives in the time capsule uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, what, two episodes, we, we it evolved and came alive as Fair Forward in Central Park last year, May, which was um, probably one of the things I'm most proud of, actually. Uh, it was beautiful to, to come to, to, to actually think that, wow, we did an event in Central Park where we stood on the shoulders of giants where people like Hend <laughs> Jimi Hendrix played and Simon Garfunkel and, and the doors and things of the, like that. I mean, it's, it's a, one of those childhood dreams. You know, you, you only dream of those things. It's quite humbling. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was there for that too. And, and to those two people who didn't make it, check it out. Uh, I think there's plenty of videos on YouTube or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah, uh, thank you. But let's roll back to the talk a little bit. This is a good segue. For people who don't know where Further Future and Fair Forward spawned from, it came from Robot Heart. Yeah. And and for those people who don't know what Robot Heart is or what Burning Man is, uh, maybe it would be a good idea. A little bit on Robot Heart, you know, not where how it started or anything, but what it is. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be speaking from my perspective. Yeah. Uh, because I can't speak, we're a collective, um, and so uh, this is my opinion. And and uh, um, or I'm you know I am one of the co-founders, uh, but th this is the vision of George Mueller, who started uh, the late George Mueller, my brother. I love you know, and heaven above, love you. Where is it? Love you. You know, he. Uh, you know, he had an amazing vision, and he created created the Robo Heart bus, um, uh, and he wanted to bring mobility to sound. Uh, I bought the curatorial aspect to it, and the, and kind of the flair, uh, and there are many other people uh, that you know we could say for a, a different discussion that that contributed to the to the robot heart success and uh and you know it it, it it was a bunch of people coming together that want to have some fun and share our our skills and knowledge and how we like to have fun with other people and if you like what we were doing come join us and we and we we're spreading love and beats it, re it was really as simple as that and some of the, sometimes the most simple things are the best things right and love and beats What's better than love and beats, right? I mean, look, who doesn't like good music and who doesn't like love, right? Right, and uh, and you know, George brought an ama amazing group of people together, and we all created magic. You're part of that, uh, and and I'm grateful to be a part of it. Uh, and it's given us a lot of gifts and friendships and 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 experiences uh, that I, that that's got led to a very fulfilling life period of time now I've seen you grow with the community as well and how many other communities that's also giving you. Thank you. Uh, you go, is, where is this Burning Man obviously had a lot to do with Robot Heart and Robot Heart a lot, had a lot to do with Burning Man, right? <laughs> is, for, is Robot Heart still planning to do a lot at Burning Man or is planning to be more off Burning Man? Well, you know, Again, I'm, um, I'm, you know, Robo Heart is now 501c3. We're a Robo Heart Foundation. We are, we, we are, uh, we are a foundation that endeavors to support artists and create amazing experiences. And, uh, that's what our mission and goal is. Right. So, um, you know, on Playa, we're there to deliver love and beats and to deliver innovative, inclusive, diverse musical experience in, in, a, in a safe space uh, that we can all enjoy uh, with our burner community. On Playa, uh, we have um, other ambitions and those ambitions are, are starting to unfold. Uh, start, and that started with New York Central Park. 
uh, Fair Forward, which um, stay tuned. That should be some news coming. And we had an experiment in Miami Art Basel as well, uh, where we uh, issued our first grant and supported uh, Brent Braufrick, um, uh with their endeavor called the Multi uh, Faith Room, uh, which was a reflection and introspection on uh, post COVID uh, through multimedia sensory experience. Um, it was an MVP, minimal viable product, proof of concept, uh, abstract concept that we helped support. And we thought it was a great success. And now they are taking that project on the road. They've been in, since then, they've been in South by Southwest. Now, I think, I believe they're touring Korea and other places. So we wish them all the best. Yeah. And the album's coming out soon. So back to Burning Man, it is a big part of us, right? Yeah. With no doubt, it's been it's transformed us as people, as human beings. Yeah. Uh, can you share your thoughts and reflections on how trans transformative the events have been for you personally? And, you know, it is a big event. It's changed a lot over the years. Perhaps you can touch on how it's changed as well. So from perhaps the early innings for Burning Man when you went and then to where it is today. And, and, and perhaps we maybe give us your thoughts on where do you where you see Burning Man building the future? I know we're not we don't have crystal balls and we're we not we're yeah. not really gonna know, but we have some perspective. We've seen we've seen a change, right? Yeah. I think uh I haven't been to the burn since two thousand nineteen. Uh and that was the last year I went and that was uh uh with George the and his his final year. And uh since then there's been a, a COVID free burn. A COVID, a free burn, which is unofficial burn, and then one burn. Who knows? Maybe I'll make another one. But uh, it is a transformative experience. It's a must-do for any creative, any person who wants to uh, open their mind, uh, understand uh, what humanity can be, what creativity can be, what interaction is, what experimentation is, uh, uh, how freedom can feel, um, and what what happens when your inhibitions are, are running wild um, and just great bonding, just authenticity. Uh, I think authentic, authenticity and, and, and just the teamwork and collaborative spirit, I think it really drives me there. And uh, for me, it's, 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 you know, from day one going there, just, it was just like, wow, this open canvas to be able to, experiment and do whatever you want and finally find your find you finally your home you call a home right because you find your lot home you're like-minded people yeah. right uh people the crazies who are like you yeah. who who are dreamers who are just wanting to create do love give uh be free yeah. uh and i i mean i think as much as people Everything evolves as much as people think that it's it's changed and whatnot. I mean, don't, don't, social media pro provides a, a certain angle to it, and and social media can just like uh, Cambridge Analytica, or whatever, cloud you yeah, give you fake news or can cloud your judgment, right, and give you a narrow view. So I think that's that's kind of colored. Uh, the view of a lot of people of what perception of what Burning Man is, and that's really not what it is, right? I mean, you stereotype it as an or I thought it was an, an orgy of uh, an orgy with a bunch of hippies, and I went there. I was just completely wrong, right? Um, so almost none of that. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and and you know, it's it's yes, the the yes, the parties make a lot of noise, and that's what you hear about. And the Sparkle Ponies people dressed up in outfits, but that's just the surface of it, right? That's superficial. That's not the heart of it. Uh, at the heart of it, it's still an, uh, uh, an incredible creative incubation hub, uh, a great kind of home for realignment and reconnecting with, with yourself and others and like-mindedness to, to get your creative juices going. And, and uh, uh, it's, 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 it's the mecca for creativity, I think. Um, uh, and, and spirituality in some sense as well. Um, where is it going? I don't know where is it going, but it, where is it going is it depends on who's going and who contributes. As, as people can continue to contribute, that's what comes out of it. You only get from Burning Man what you give, right? And as a collective giving 
is the outcome of what what you get right it's the it's the beautiful cacophony the harmonious cacophony that is burning man that's that's what it is right burning man's obviously been the big contribution to to my perspective my lens of was shot and documented the bird yeah almost 10 years and a lot of brubba art too so yeah i do uh i do feel very very strongly to uh to what you just said uh let's talk about today what what um you know please share with us like what, what details of creative pro projects you're working on today uh i'm eager to hear about it uh what what do you have what are you stirring the pot in now yeah i mean there's a lot of things that are under wraps i'm in the lab right now i mean we have the annual part the annual event that i do with princess ali and dino uh sadwani the uh that they graciously hand me the keys of creativity to do which has become like an annual calendar event about basel hong kong uh so that's coming up we're gonna start gearing up for that uh robo heart lineup this summer uh you know I don't play an active role in Wonderfruit anymore, but I'm still an ambassador and still helping, uh, you know, help it bear fruit, uh, so to speak. Uh, and I'm just great to see it flourish and and really blossom and and post COVID come back stronger than ever. Um, and it's amazing to see Southeast Asia grow. Uh, but right now, my focus is on Bali, and and uh, you know, I, I I was blessed and very grateful that. Uh, that a visionary by the name of Sergei Solonin had uh, uh, recruited me to come and be his business partner to start uh, a comp uh, to invest in my company called Do What You Love, which is an experience design agency for creating magic, doing what we love, and loving what we do, uh, and, and without any inhibitions, so I can create fr freely. And he created the ultimate playground. Imagine it's basically a culmination of. Burning Man, Wonder Food, For the Future, Robot, all these things rolled into one, but permanently, year round, in the beautiful island of Bali. So what's not to love? So so why did I move here back to the beginning? It's like, well, well, it was like, well, green school for my family, uh, for my kids, because we're into sustainability, ties into Wonder Fruit, and my life stage of wanting to, post-COVID, wanting to go back to nature, slow down the pace, be more present, be more calm, be more reflective, and be more introspective, um, be more strategic. Um, yeah, so my, my focus is on Bali with Nuanu, and with Nuanu, it's a 44 hectare future city focused on regeneration. Um, the philosophy of Triata Karana, uh, Bali's philo philosophy, uh, nature, uh, human, and the spirits, I believe, and then uh, and also education. Uh, these are the three tenants. My goal, uh, my mandate is to create, create and bring in and curate experiences uh, that are suitable for the space to help augment uh, um, Nuanu and Bali and Southeast Asia. Um, so, my goal. Uh, is is to you know like you said uh, my pur purpose and goals is, is is like you said in the beginning i'm always doing something that's uh different from others right and so i'll be unveiling very shortly uh five to six projects next year that will be uh very different from what asia has seen uh and it'll be something that I think will help benefit uh, Southeast Asia, uh, the world, and, and Bali, and Nuanu, of course. <laughs>